All right, David. Bye, Dave. Happy Friday. Sure is. Oh, I got a dog joining me. Yeah, come on. Today. Yeah, come on. Let's go. He's a. <laughs> yeah, right. Studio is sacred. This is a different studio, studio though. This is studio a less sacred used studio. Be, used to be sacred. <laughs> Yeah, Ryan's right, record. Panting on camera. Ryan's record. Good old uh, end of the day, end of the week blitz. Um, if you guys made it through all the videos this week, Dave and I always appreciate that the most. And, uh, yeah, as always, Dave, I appreciate you as well. So I came across this thing. Las Vegas, apparently, they're building um, a new resort. Is it full of whores? The Las, Ve uh, Las Vegas is opening the MSG Sphere. That costs two point two billion and is taller than the Statue of Liberty. How are they building it for so cheap? They probably don't got to worry about all the elements. That might help. That's that's a legitimate question because what's what's the new Bill Stadium going to be like? Two four and a half billion. billion. Is it two billion? Yeah, something like that. And it's going to be. They don't even have a roof on that. So no. Yeah. They better and have really look, nice leather recliners or something. If you look up pictures of this thing, it looks like a Death Star. And uh, the video I oh, that's because it's probably the Death Star. Uh, there's pictures of it, and they want to like illuminate the outside of it, and it almost looks like um like a like a celestial moon, moon. <laughs> like on the ground, man. It's just it's, it's like awe inspiring, you know. And um, you know, not to stand on my fucking bandwagon here, but. You know, as great as it is, is that we can have these amazing machines and we do all these crazy things in these buildings. It's like you're talking about a debt ceiling. We've seen an AI sway our whole down Jones industrial average, but we can fucking spend $2.2 billion on a globe in Las Vegas, which probably doesn't even need it. I don't know. Call me a pompous American. I'm just, I think I'm getting over, I think I'm getting tired of it. Honestly. Yeah, but who's who's spending the $2 billion on it? Probably the people of Las Vegas. Not MSG or whatever. Yeah, I wonder if Madison Square Garden Sphere. Like, <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm not, like, I, don't get me wrong. I don't hate wealth. I'm glad we have billionaires in, in freaking America and not some billionaire in another country that can control us and do the same thing that we get accused of doing all the time. Look, I don't want that either. But, like, I hear all this stuff about homelessness and... There's fucking every problem we have under the sun and the debt ceiling and war and but you're building two point two billion dollar stadium. I'm sure the ink was dried on that shit fine. I'm sure plenty of people had construct it happened with the Bill Stadium. You know what's crazy? What's what's Elon worth? Two hundred billion? Yeah, something like that. So that's equivalent of like if you have two hundred dollars and you spend two dollars on something. <laughs> But these people don't have liquid two billion, obviously. No, no, he has to sell yeah. assets. Yeah. 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 It's just it's just insane. Mosquito. Man. Mosquito. Like I said, I want the billionaires here. I don't want them in other places. And I'm not demonizing these people or trying all that. But it's just like we're Sorry, hearing, kill we're hearing debt ceiling talk, man. It's just so gnarly to me. Speaking of Elon, Elon Musk spring company um neuralink announces fda approval for inhuman clinical studies no time dave so he said forever ago on um rogan's podcast i think that they were planning within a year or two years to start chipping and studying humans so he's right on track i'm still gonna ask my question if Neuralink is so great that it can make everybody could go a million dollars in debt to get it because you're going to be able to all be a millionaire, all these wonderful things, why wouldn't only one person need to do it to figure it out for the rest of us? Well, that's I don't. That's not. How come we all got to go robot? Well, we don't have all that to go robot. It's yeah. not a mandated chip. They're gonna yet. Well, we saw how the last mandate went. We didn't do that either. So. Oh, Dave, speaking of that, you sent me that. Uh, Neil Gorsuch appointed uh, under Donald, President Donald Trump, still President Donald yeah. Trump. Yeah, well, honestly, the greatest uh, thing Trump did in office, in my opinion, was three Supreme Court justices. 
You know, Kitschek said that the COVID lockdowns were the single uh, most egregious thing in civil liberties in American history. Yeah. I think so that's YouTube, right. Yeah, that's um, a Supreme Court justice saying that, not me. I just happen to agree with Well, he's just, a, he's just a right-wing extremist, right? I just had – oh, speaking of right-wing extremists, David, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> I've seen – they have a pyramid Ponzi scheme diagram here. I know this isn't quite what you guys are used to with Dave's phenomenal editing. Okay. I, and this is the pyramid of far right radicalization. I'm sure they don't have a left one of these somewhere, David. I'm sure it's just the right wingers. They got to worry about getting radicalized. And uh, Prager university is on here on the second tier, the GOP national Fox news, CBN, um, the three percenters, oath keepers uh, back to blue. Breitbart News, the MAGA boys, they got Nazis on here. A lot of people that are infiltrated by the FBI and CIA, I suspect. Proud Boys. No, oh, like the Proud Boys, <laughs> for example. Buffalo. That's not Buffalo, baby. No. Not she's in training. Yeah. Our new, empl- our new employee in training is still, she's still learning. Yeah. I haven't told her all the conspiracies yet. So I haven't passed my, all my years of Alex. She only knows operation paperclip and a few others so far. Yeah. Sorry. There's so much to keep up with. Yeah. What was yeah. the one? I always forget the names of them. What was the one JFK? Um, it was during the JFK administration. They wanted to shoot down the commercial airliner. Yeah. And JFK is like, no, you're fucking out of your mind. You're not doing that. Golf Atonka, maybe. No, it was, it was an operation. They're always an operation, something. I forgot what the hell it was called. Too many operations. Yo, imagine being the president and getting that brought to you. Like, what are you fucking doing? What yeah, are you, you out of your doing? fucking mind? Could you imagine doing, being like a you're doing regular? What? Like, imagine a regular person winning presidency and seeing the shit that they're recommending behind closed doors. They'd be like, are you... What? Dude, that'd be like the auto mechanic shop. Do that. Look, to get more business, we're going to flatten everybody's tires in the parking lot. <laughs> I usually throw out a handful of nails in the morning just to drum up some quick early morning Holy appointments. Holy fuck. Speaking about nails, David, why Americans are having fewer babies? The U.S. birth rate has dropped to 15. This woman report the economy and social obstacles are causing them to have fewer children than they want. What social obstacles? Yeah, the economy's great. The economy's great. There's more women in school than ever before. You're making more than the average man. Women dominate almost all fields, minus blue collar. There's more teachers. There's more this. There's more that. Yeah, it sounds sounds like everything's doing well. What is it? Oh, it, the cost of living. To it's weird that as you as p- we give everybody more equal things, we have to all work now. I said this earlier in the week. It's a shame that our grandparents were able to build the whole world on a nickel, and I need hundreds of nickels. I need thousands of nickels because it's been so devalued. We had so much wealth, and they stripped it from all of us. It's almost like the money used to be backed by something of value. It's weird when you can lock in inflation with physical things, David. I don't even know if they can (laughs) even do that anymore. Uh, People are having fewer babies. Not even going to get into this. I'm just referencing it because I came on this podcast many times and told you that population collapse is more important than climate change and things. And this is what Elon Musk is saying, Jordan Peterson, Chris Williamson. and uh, Yeah, but the other people are telling us that our climate cannot – or our – Earth cannot handle all these people, and the climate's going to uh, set us all on fire if there's more people. The thing that's a real shame when you see these things is like, why Americans are having fewer babies? And it's like, and the headline should be complete with, and why it's bad. Like, but we've done such a good job of removing, like, but it might, it might say that you just have to subscribe to get the rest of the news article. I'm convinced people forget that abortions actually can affect people, like living things. Like, I just think people literally have just been sucked so well. We've done so good at identifying a cell that we forget a cell is a person. Like, we all start as one thing. Yeah, they're and just I, clump of cells, right? Fucking A, dude. I had this thought the other day. I know this is completely off the rails, but what if your consciousness is all of your cells talking to your body? Like, collectively. Like, they send a liaison I, to your so, bones and your body and your mind to talk to each other, and it's your consciousness. 
I suppose technically that's true. Right. Well, I got this gut feeling. Right. All these. That's your, well, that's your cell guts. Speaking of cell guts. No, um, there's no way you got a transition for that. Twitter spaces crashes repeatedly during DeSantis 2024 announcement. DeSantis. D's nuts. I, I realized watching his, his thing that I've been saying his name wrong the whole time. DeSantis. Because he says Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. Um, here's what I'm going to say. Go watch Patrick Back David's breakdown of this entire thing. It's well, here's what I'm going to say. It's short. And I also think the Santas is going to get the floor mopped with him. Well, here's what I'm going to say. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Watch, watch us next week because I'm pretty sure Christian's coming on, so we can talk about Ron DeSantis. Yeah, and I said uh, on yesterday's episode, I believe that um, I'm going to try to remain impartial this election segment cycle. It's going to be very hard, and I may not stick to my own word with it, but um, – because I want to approach this. I want to. I think I'm at the point now, David, of of, of our breakdowns that I want to see how other people are reacting to what's going on instead of reacting. Because um, I think it's more telling when I'm watching other people's trends now. Anyways, the point. The point is, is um, Patrick Pat David actually brought it up first, and he said Twitter's headquarters is in California, and a right winger was dropping on like there might have been foul play in there. Elon Might Musk, have been. Elon Musk also has said that Twitter is open to all elections, all campaigns, all parties, all points of view. That's a win. Um, well, that's gonna, that's what free speech is. That's a good thing. David, I'm just going to say this. This is the sprinkles on a pound of shit. Okay, you can dress up a pig. You can put lipstick on a pig. You can make it the prettiest pig possible, but it's still a pig. I'll believe yeah, you guys it. are when doing I the wrong things it. with your pegs. I don't, I don't care what they put on there. I don't care if it's Tucker Carlson. I don't care if Alex Jones or Andrew Tate's allowed back on. These people are going to do whatever they can to stop you, us, the American people. They will do anything. They will sabotage anything. They'll blow Twitter up. They'll do anything they need to do. They They'll get globalists as the CEO. They flooded a thing full of ballots. Like what? There's a fucking water those, main break that didn't even happen. Those were irregularities, right? We're on YouTube. They will Maybe. do. They will do anything. They will. I'm not putting it past them. I'm not saying that. Don't move it. I'm not saying don't go to Twitter. We should 100. Twitter probably is going to do very well. Patrick Bet David said that they'll be a trillion dollar company in ten years. They're on their way. This right now, Twitter's about to cut out every single media there is when it comes to elections, which by default means we don't even need the news to ask the president questions anymore. All the same. It's interesting. DeSantis having a rocky start to his campaign. No, Ryan, Ryan, say it with me. Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis having a rocky start to his campaign. Interesting. This is unrelated, but I'm realizing if I shoot out here again next week, I'm going to need lights when it gets dark. Mm. I feel like, uh, what was that show? Is it Are You Afraid of the Dark? No, you didn't. You don't watch TV as a kid, did you? You missed out. Not like cable TV. I watched like the 246, 9, 7, 23. Did you get a lot of PBS? Yeah, lots of PBS. A lot of that publicly funded programming. Government sponsored media. Publicly funded program by these seven super insanely rich people. <laughs> by people or people like you, as they call it. People like you. Yeah, my $5 is what's making that cartoon. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll touch this ba- briefly, David. Um, Fed minutes. This is a breaking market news. Just some random person on Twitter, but it's a blue check mark, so it must be true, David. Oh, that means they have eight dollars a month. Um, Fed staff continues to forecast mild recession starting later this year, followed by a mostly paced recession. Or, I'm sorry, mostly just like mostly peaceful. Uh, followed by a mostly a modestly paced recovery. Oh. You can set the Dow Jones Industrial Average like a thermostat, but then. You're going to know exactly how a recession pans out. Dave, it's almost like as if they know exactly how the economy. Well, these people are experts, right? 
Uh, that's right. They are the experts. Yeah. And they're they the intellectuals, and we're the pseudo intellectuals. Yeah, because they haven't taught me enough in the public school I'm supposed to take about how the whole world works. They did, tell me I need to spend more money to figure that out. Did they say in that article how they're going to justify a recession since they changed the uh, definition? Uh, they probably will just say that that never happened, David. Well, if they're, if they're saying they expect a recession later this year, what do they? What is the determining factor of the recession that they're expecting? I don't know, David. They'll probably just. It's say not it's GDP cool. anymore because cool. that's what it used to be. So it's got to be something else. Happens, do they expect? David, do they expect the unemployment? Unemployment. Do they expect the unemployment rate to go up? Uh, ooh. You think or go this, this down? However you, however you say that, they expect it to get worse. <laughs> Because remember, that was the thing they said. They said, well, typically, this is how we judge a recession, but the unemployment number is so good. So do they expect the unemployment number to get bad? Do you think this is them paving the way early, David, or what we would call greasing the skids for a Biden bailout in the 2024 election to blame Trump and his opponents and their ideology. Well, that's exactly what they're going to do. Cause they're going to say, well, we didn't have a recession until the Republicans got power of, of the house. Yeah. And then Trump's going to say, we would have never had it if it wasn't for China, 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 the house or the Senate. The Kung flu has taken this country by storm. I still believe, I still believe that we're in world war, civil war and Chinese war. For the record, I want to China war, China war. Isn't that encompassed? This in war the, was made in the China. Global war, though. World war. Yeah, yeah. This war was made in China. <laughs> if I can interview Trump, one of my lives, I'm just going to have him do a reel of China things. <laughs> Donald Trump criminal trial is set for March 2024. David, it's weird. A couple years out here, judge Ooh, yeah, I- Trump that he. Uh, informs Trump what he can't say about the hush money case. Which, when you told me this, my reaction was that's exactly what they did with Alex Jones in the defamation trials. They told him what he could and could not say. And then they're like, oh, I lost the trial. Well, no shit. You told him what he could and couldn't say. Yeah, this is like tying a guy's hands behind his back and saying you can't use your feet and then beating his ass. <laughs> this is literally what they know in third world. This is literally a kangaroo court. It's literally a sham trial. It's literally a kangaroo court. Which is what he said in the CNN town hall. Oh, that fucking town. I, st- I never even listen. I don't even need to. I just know. This is what I mean. Oh, it's so I, good. Yeah, I don't even need to listen. I just know. I just know this guy is on fucking fire. I'm done listening to him because <laughs> I listened to him the whole last time. And nobody believed I know, I know. him. And he's been right on everything. <laughs> and I know we're staying open-minded, Ryan, for the election, but the one thing, and I, I'd like DeSantis as a governor, I think he's done a good job with Florida, obviously. He's the best results of the of, in the nation as far as a governor. But there's no way he would go on that CNN town hall and tell that reporter she's a nasty woman. <laughs> God, it's, such a- <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> there may never be another guy like that ever. In the you know, you really are a nasty woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, man. Yeah, um, it's weird that they're saying Trump's date to 2024 in March, which is like, I don't know, literally the time during the like selection of these committees. But, I, you know, this kind of reminds me of like you know, other times that they're like, oh, we're not going to uh, the Hunter Biden laptop story. Oh, it's too close to an election. To... <laughs> what? Because if Trump wins the election, then he can pardon himself on the hush money case. You're trying to get him in jail for like, come on, man. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> really not dumb here. It's so, you know what's crazy too is like I get called to we get called the pseudos, Dave. But it's it's not even like it's hard to. I'm not acting like it's hard to see this stuff. It, that's what's so funny. No, no, that's the thing is we're acknowledging we're not intellectual. Yeah, but we still so foresee easy. all these things. It's the joke. It's the opposite of a pseudo intellectual. Yeah, I'm a fucking dummy. But I recession change the thing about recession. I wonder if they're gonna change the word recovery as well. <laughs> modest recovery how do you define a recovery uh less of a recession if the recession gets less bad it's a recovery centers issued satellite phones as part of a new security measure Amid Brian, we have satellite of- we're on satellite phones right now well, i don't know david these must be the super satellites <laughs> amid growing concerns of security risk to members of congress more than 50 senators which is a lot half yeah, 50 like, senators? That's half of them. 
That's that's a lot. It's <laughs> a lot. How many senators are there? Five hundred. Those are House members. You fuck. <laughs> that's everybody. Yeah, no. It's, fifty it's... senators have been issued satellite phones for emergency communication. I wonder which fifty are they all Democrats? I don't know. People <laughs> oh, weird. Only the Democrats got <laughs> issued satellite phones. Yo, they printed this. This is so funny to me. Part of new security measure. Okay, that's the headline. Just keep that in mind. New security measure in place. Oh, great. Security. Security's great. Um, 50 centers have been issued satellite phones for emergency communication. People familiar with the measures told a CBS. So you have new security measures in place that can get leaked to the fucking media? Yeah, that's right. Those, I know I'm being facetious, but I know that that's the FBI telling the news to tell this to just keep us in the fucking hamster wheel. The devices are a part of a series of new security measures being offered to senators by the Senate Sergeant at Arms who took over shortly after the assault on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Assault. You mean the 10,000 plus hours of your men, the government's men walking around letting people into the Capitol building? I wonder if those uh, satellite phones are going to work during the next AI fake video scandal. Oh, sure. i seen a video on the internet completely unrelated. What would happen if the Earth didn't have oxygen for five seconds? For five seconds? Yeah, yeah. Like, like five seconds. One, two, three, four. Five. How would how would anything happen? Can everything just hold its breath? Yeah, but listen, I'm not a scientist. Stop. I'm just everything. No, everything would stop, right? Like cars would stop because they're moving through air, right? There's no air. There's nothing for it to dry. Like everything would stop. The Earth would fall apart. Apparently, the soil's eighty-seven percent oxygen or something crazy. Is that right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So, like, in five seconds, it would start deteriorating everything. Like, it all needs oxygen. Which made me think, you know, if they're trying to kill carbon dioxide and keep the footprint, they're literally trying to starve you of air. Because if we make plants that make oxygen, it would grow better soil. Well, see, that's what we've said that in the past, is that we have a greener planet now with the higher carbon dioxide levels. Most trees ever. Yeah, more trees than ever. More a lot of things than ever. Hold on one second. I got something to summertime this week. I'm pretty sure I wanted to read it out of Jordan Pearson's book. <sighs> Yeah, I thought there was something that I wanted to. Daddy. Go get that out. Go go paint your room. I am. I just finished one here. Okay. We're going to be going to bed after this, okay? Are you kidding me? Yeah, no. All right, here it is. I found it. Sorry, it took me a minute. So I've been reading Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. And in this rule, it's Rule 11, which is... Do not bother children when they are skateboarding. Okay, it's an interesting rule. Excuse me? Yeah, yeah. Don't bother children when they're skateboarding. Okay, these aren't as straightforward as I was expecting, apparently. No. That's a very, very specific rule. Yeah, yeah. They're very... Uh, the last one is uh, when you see a cat on the street, pet it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, that's this is not at all what I expected. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, I guess he so, wouldn't be the great Jordan Peterson if he had straightforward rules. Yeah, uh, this book is incredible. Uh, I bought digital. I know I told you guys this and stuff. I've been really making an exerted effort. The weather's been very nice, so I've been going outside. I've been letting the kid ride her scooter, and I've been just sitting there reading like ten or twenty pages, like every time, and slowly chipping away. I bought a couple other books. I know I told you guys about them, so I'm trying to get through those too, just trying to get better every day, all that stuff, but um, I've been putting it into practice, actually, so it's been feeling good. My mind's been staying sharp. I've been staying busy, but the point is it was something, it's reminding me kind of like what we were talking about a little bit 
within the last few weeks with the cult, with the culture war, you know, cause we always hear, you know, like, why would these companies do this? You know, like why, why would they willingly subjugate their audience? Why would they willingly um, pick 50%? Why would they side with this? Why would Facebook do this? Right. We've always asked this Dave, you know, and we've come from the angle of like objectivity, even though we know, and we believe that it's a plan which we're just trying to present the fact like, okay, let's say it's not a plan. What this is a good alternative if it's just by accident. Right. Mm -hmm. And in Jordan Pearson's book, it's a little long, but I'm going to read it because I think he does a good job of like breaking down. Like, cause these are the people we're dealing with. Right. When I say like, these are the people who are exactly what we're doing. Um, and this, he said this about Orwell or well, uh, in the book, second half, this was about um, Orwell wrote The Road to Wigan Pier for the Left Book Club. And this book was about like coal miners. And they would have to crawl like an hour and a half through like a shaft, like literally so big they could barely fit in it. Hour and a half one way, work 11 hours and go back the other half and make like very little money. And they would always be trapped in there. And this was in the very early ages and uh, industrial revolution, all that, you know, like when it was fully in the point is, is, um, uh, Orwell turned his gaze to a different problem. The comparison, uh, the comparative unpopularity of socialism in the UK at the time, despite the clear and painful inadequacy observable everywhere. He concluded that the tweed wearing armchair philosophizing victim identifying a pity and contempt Dispending social reformer types frequently did not like the poor as they claimed. Instead, they just hated the rich. Hmm. That sounds accurate and familiar. And if this, the thing that struck me is like money is the easiest thing. What is the saying? Uh, money shows you man who uh, shows a man who he really is, right? Because if you have unlimited funds, you'll know what you'll do, right? And it's hmm. like money is an enhancer to your character. Like if you give a bad person money, he's going to do terrible things. But if you give a very good person money, they're going to do wonderful things, right? And it's just like an enhancer. And it just got me thinking, um, if Orwell thought that about the rich, it's got to be – that's got to be applicable to almost everything else in your life. Like the guy you work with that you can't get around. Like why is this guy – like, I feel like a wall's here. And it's because the guy's jealous of you. And he can sit there and say he's not or he's a hard worker. But you guys know. Everybody knows those people in your way. Those people mm -hmm. that are put there as obstacles either by chance or the heavens or your religion. or And I don't know. Maybe I guess that's what I'm learning as I'm aging. And that's why I think it's relevant and I wanted to share it was because it seems like for every road that I'm hitting or every little rock that's getting in my way or however big or whatever – I'm navigating and finding ways to solve problems or navigating, finding ways, trying to get new paths. I'm just trying anything, right? Like Jordan Peterson would say, you try to fall forward, right? And then I guess that's in the Bible. And um, yeah, I round I rounded off the, this week with this because with us being in the culture war, like it's when I haven't talked politics all week, Dave. I've been telling you that I've been kind of distant from it and just coming on the show and then giving it all raw to you guys and you especially. And um, I think, I think like uh, the culture war is affecting everybody now. Like it's not just like one in five people I talk to. It's like every person I talk to is talking about something in the culture. So I guess that um, maybe the envy and the hating the rich and, Maybe that goes full circle, hating the people better than you or people in happy relationships, people that drive nicer cars than you. I mean, anything. People that are mentally healthy, people that are physically healthy, people that eat well, people that drink water all day and you just drink pop and you like socially shame them because you know, like these, all these little, uh, little weird psychology things. And it's like, if we're not tight with our mind and, and have a lot of self-awareness, we're going to get caught up in this AI whirlwind that is upon us. So. I don't know. I guess I'll cut it there. Dave is always appreciate your free time. You can catch us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern for the weekly show. Dave Ryan, December 1773, YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook. As always, Dave and I will be there. David, I thank you for your time. See you later. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs>